Hi guys and welcome to TechBased. In this video, we're gonna talk about the latest Windows 11 Insider preview build for the dev channel, which is the build 23466. Well, we finally have a new dev channel build after a few weeks, and this dev channel build is a huge one in my opinion. We have a lot of new features and changes, and of course, fixes or known issues that were discovered in the previous builds, and I think this is a great new build that was released to the dev channel. As always, in this video, we're gonna talk about everything that is new, everything that has changed and also what is fixed in this newest Windows 11 Insider preview build for the dev channel. If you enjoy videos like these, please don't forget to leave a like below and also subscribe to the tech base channel with the notification bell activated so that you won't miss any future uploads like this one. So let's begin with the video. First of all, Microsoft is releasing official ISOs for this build. So of course you can go into the official Microsoft website, select the edition, which is the latest dev channel build, click on confirm and select the product language. And of course you're going to have the ISO available to you. First of all, in this build we're getting dev drives dev drive is a new form of storage volume available to improve performance for key developer workloads this is basically a new way for developers to create a safe environment for their testing work and i think that is very very nice i'm not going to go in depth with this but if you want to learn more and see more info you can check out the article below microsoft is also adding backup and restore improvements and they are introducing additional backup and restore capabilities in this build to make moving to a new pc easier than ever and to help app developers retain users across this new PC transition. And along with that, we have the Windows Backup app, app pins and also settings which will help you restore settings from your previous device to your new pc i think that is pretty useful also more improvements to voice access we have new text authoring experiences if you're interested in this you can find more info in the article below and also we have natural voices in chinese for the narrator which also can be useful for some people in this build also to minimize distractions from notification toasts microsoft can now detect if the user is interacting with toasts or not and provide a suggestion to turn the toast banner on for such apps. I think this is also really good. This will only stop the banners from appearing and you can still find the toasts in the notification center. Regarding the start menu, Microsoft is trying out a different model for ranking the most recently used files in the start menu's recommended section that considers when the file was last used, the file extension, and more. This means you may not see files purely in reverse chronological order of when they were last used. Now we're going to talk about a huge new feature that Microsoft is announcing, which is the never combined taskbar icons. Thank you so much from the beginning of the video that I have an app opened and we have that set up. And this is basically a very early stage of this in the development process, but in the never combined mode, you'll be able to see each window of your applications on the taskbar individually, as well as their corresponding labels. And if you right click on the taskbar and then go to taskbar settings, you can go to taskbar behaviors. Thank you to Phantom Ocean 3 for providing IDs to enable some of these features in this build that are slowly rolling out. So you may not see this right away, but of course in the coming days, I'm gonna make separate videos in which I'll show you how to enable some of these hidden features. And here we have three new options. First of all, we have combined taskbar buttons and hide labels. I'm selected to never, but if I click on always, as you can see, the taskbar will go right back to default. We have when taskbar is full and never. And also an interesting thing is that we can show labels on taskbar pins. So as you can see, I have a pinned file explorer icon here and I can show the label to it even if the app is not open. I think that is also really nice. And you also have combined taskbar buttons and hide labels and other taskbars. I think this is related to taskbars on other monitors, I think. So even though this is a very early stage in the development process for this, I think works pretty nice and uh, I didn't find any bugs that were visible related to this feature. And I'm very, very excited that Microsoft is implementing this. As I've said, I'm gonna make a different video in the coming days in which I'll show you how to enable this. Microsoft is also beginning to roll out the exploration of a new hover behavior for the search box and search highlight clean. This is also slowly rolling out, so you may not see it right away, but I think this is also pretty interesting. Now, another huge thing in this build is that we have an updated file explorer and we are slowly closing into the final version of the new file explorer in Windows 11. Also, you'll notice that Microsoft removed the pizza icon on the command bar as the Windows app SDK version of file explorer is now fully rolled out to insiders in the dev channel. And in this build in particular, we have this new address bar here, which looks very, very nice in my opinion, especially on this dark mode. As you can see, it matches the Windows 11 
experience very well. It has nice uh, rounded corners, buttons and animations. I think this looks very, very nice. Of course, I'm gonna make a different video on how to enable this if you're interested in the coming days. Related to emojis, based on feedback, Microsoft updated a few emojis in the current set and I think this is a nice improvement. Also, Microsoft updated the Windows Security Firewall Notification dialog that now matches the Windows 11 visuals. Related to networking, Microsoft added support for bridging adapters via command line. Passpoint Wi-Fi networks will now support enhanced connection performance and will display the URL in quick settings to provide information to users about the venue or event. And also, Microsoft added WPA3 support to the phone link instant hotspot feature for more secure connections to a phone's hotspot. Also made fixes to respect metered connection settings, reduce duplicate profiles, and show the phone's display name in the network list. Also, Microsoft added links to advanced properties for network adapters and internet properties under settings, network and internet, advanced network settings. And you can see here this new section, more adapter options. You can click on edit and you'll get this advanced properties. Also, Microsoft added a way to view Wi-Fi passwords for your known networks via settings, network and internet, Wi-Fi and manage known networks. I think this is also very, very nice. Also, Microsoft added the ability to join Bluetooth personal area networks under the settings, Bluetooth and devices. This option will appear for paired devices like phones that are sharing internet over Bluetooth. And based on feedback, Microsoft added additional options to the data usage page that allows for daily and weekly data limits. This page will also now show how far a data limit has been exceeded. Microsoft also updated the design of the lists displayed under settings, apps, and startup apps. And also in settings, apps, advanced app settings, and app execution alias. This was also improved to be more consistent with other settings pages. And also in the startup section, it's now easier to access more information about the apps listed. Microsoft is moving the for developers settings page from settings, privacy, and security to now be under settings and system, as you can see it right here. In this build, of course, we have the dynamic lighting as a hidden feature, and also the new snap assist features that are rolling out to the file explorer. And a final thing that we cannot really call a feature is that inside taskbar settings, Microsoft now added Microsoft Teams as a default option in taskbar items. I think this is pretty cool because if you're not using Teams for work, I don't think you're using it for anything else because let's be honest, most of the users use other apps to connect and talk with other people. So this is it related to new features in this build. Now let's talk about a few fixes regarding the file explorer. Microsoft fix an issue which would cause file explorer or the control panel to become unresponsive to clicks after invoking the context menu. And they also fix an issue where file explorer and taskbar weren't responding to light and dark mode changes until the explorer.exe was restarted if you had this version. Related to gallery, Microsoft added icons for the entries in the collection drop down in gallery. And they also fix an issue where narrator wasn't saying anything when opening and closing the new details pane. Related to the taskbar, they fix an issue where the taskbar and multi monitor setups would show the indicator for an app window having focus on your screen when it actually didn't. Regarding search on the taskbar, Microsoft fixed the issue causing some users to see content flicker before the content finishes loading when the search flyout is opened. And they also fixed an issue causing search to crash on launch for some insiders in the previous build. Related to notifications, they fixed an issue which was making the notification center and notification page in settings crash when switching do not disturb status for some insiders in the last few flights. Related to the task manager, the search icon should be easier to see now when using a contrast theme. Pressing enter when keyboard focuses on one of the sections like memory and the performance page should now actually switch sections. Made the navigation pane a bit narrower as part of this change when necessary the text will be wrapped now. The creation of light kernel memory dump file submenu has access keys now and also resizing task manager from the top of the window should work now. Related to settings, Microsoft fixed an issue which was causing settings to crash randomly sometimes when navigating away from certain pages. The final fix related to Windows Spotlight, they fixed an issue which was causing Explorer.exe to crash when selecting learn more about this picture in the previous flight. So this is basically it regarding this new dev channel build 23466. I think this is a huge build and if you want to learn more about known issues in this build, you can check out the article below in the video's description because there are quite a few known issues but I think this is good that we know about them. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave a like below and also subscribe to the TechBase channel with the notification bell activated so that you won't miss any future uploads like this one. I was Emmanuel from TechBase. Until next time, have a nice day.